welcome to the final President's Challenge for 2015. And this month's President's Challenge needs little explanation. Uh, the President's Challenge for December is Holiday Ornament. Now I've made a couple of videos in the past, um, a few years ago, on different kinds of ornaments. One uh, I call Easy Ornaments uh, because they're made out of poplar. You make them real quick. You color them right on the lathe with Sharpie markers. Uh, or you paint them with uh, pigmented shellac and color them by hand. The other kind of uh, ornament that I've done a video on uh, about three years ago, three, four years ago, are urchin ornaments. And I was really tempted to do that for the President's Challenge because one, uh, in November I, at my local club, I did a demonstration on how to make urchin ornaments, so it was fresh in my mind. And the other reason is that the video that I did three or four years ago is probably overdue for an update. But, on the other hand, I was kind of itching to do something brand new. So I went, uh, did a little search on Google and it didn't take me long, right away something caught my eye. Uh, it was the snowman ornaments uh, that the, the hat on the snowman was actually tilted. But when I tried to find a little bit more about uh, how those were made, uh, when I clicked through to see, to visit the site, I didn't see those anywhere. But I finally tracked down where they came from. Uh, they were on a site by a turner named Rayleigh Lockhart. Uh, but there wasn't any additional information there on how he made them. But I can kind of tell by looking at it, uh, because the hat and the body of the snow, snowman ornament uh, had, were made of different species, I'm assuming that he made them out of two different pieces. Uh, but for me, being a multi-axis kind of guy, you may have seen my board up there in the past videos, uh, I wanted to see if I could make that same kind of ornament out of a single piece of wood using multi-axis technique. So this is what I came up with. That's the snowman ornament that I came up with. Uh, and you can see, if looking from the side, the hat is very steadily tilted. Now the problem is, I made this with my very expensive, specialized Escalon multi-axis chuck. Uh, and that's not really going to be so good for a tutorial, because I can't have step 1B go out and spend a lot of money on an expensive, specialized chuck. Uh, that's just not going to fly. Uh, so what I had to do is I had to come up with another way uh, to make that ornament without using that specialized chuck. So what I came up with was a way to make uh, that ornament uh, by using a standard four jaw chuck and a scrap of high quality plywood. All right, the first thing I need to do is prepare my blank. And I have a piece of poplar here that I've cut out uh, six and three quarters long and a square, uh, one and a quarter inch square. It needs to be at least one inch square. Um, and the difference is uh, the, lar the fatter the stock, the fatter the blank, the more tilt I can get out of the hat. And this piece, and this ornament I did with one inch square, and I got a good amount of tilt out of the hat, but one and a quarter inch I might get a little bit more tilt. Um, but you can only go so fat uh, because there is an eye lag in here on the top of the ornament that is in line with the snowman itself. And if you get too much tilt, there'll be no place for the eye lag to go. And the second thing about the blank is I need one true side, one true face, uh, so that I can create parallel lines on either end of the blank. The other three sides don't have to be, uh, they can be rough, but one side needs to be perfectly flat. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm always going to keep track of this, this uh, true surface. I'm going to keep it towards myself. Now what I need to do is I need to have a line on either end right down the center of the blank uh, perpendicular to my true side. So I've marked, this is an inch and a quarter, so I've marked five eighths, <clears throat> and I'm just going to use this true side and mark a line right down the middle. And now when I do the other side, I want to make sure that I keep this true side always towards me, so I'm going to flip it like that. And so now I'm guaranteed those lines on either side of my blank are parallel. And the next step, I'm going to mark the center of that line. So once again, this is about an inch and a quarter. And so about five eighths. So those two points, the points on the center, that's my center axis. That's going to be for the snowman section. Now, what I need to do is I need to set up a second axis that'll be for the hat. And what I'm going to do is I need, I need about at least an eighth of an inch from the end, just so I have enough wood to stick my centers into. And so that's going to give me about three-eighths of an inch, all right, there. And now this end is going to be the finial end of this end of the ornament. So I'm going to put a little F here 
near the center to remind myself that that's the finial end. And what I'll do now is I need to flip this over. I'm going to take that 3 8 that I had when I went this way uh, for the finial end, finial end, and now I'm going to go the other direction, but I'm only going to go half the distance. So since I went 3 8 for the finial end, I need to go 3 16 on to 3 16 this end and this direction. And this is going to be my H for hat or head end. And finally, I'll just make some dimples on those marks to make it easier to get into the centers. All right, time to make some shavings. Uh, I'm gonna mount uh, my blank between centers to get started. And it doesn't really matter which end you put in which direction, but I've had a, I've had a habit of putting the head uh, on this end. So basically, I'm starting out uh, with the snowman in this position. And at this point, first thing I'm gonna do is just rough this out, turn this into a cylinder. Uh, so you can use a roughing gouge. I tend to like to a rough with a skew for some reason. Next thing I'm going to do is on the head end of the ornament, I need to make a three quarter inch by three quarter inch tenon right here. So I'll mark this, measure out three quarters of an inch. And I'll turn that to three quarters inch diameter. And what I like to use uh, when I have a nice even value like that for a uh, for a tenon is to use a box wrench because they're just slightly oversized. You can see that's just a hair oversized, hair worth three quarters of an inch. And I like that little bit of an extra. I'd rather have to sand off a little bit or take it down a little bit further uh, than have to start over. And what this tenon is for uh, is that we're going to insert this into a little jig insert uh, that's going to be held by a four jaw chuck. We'll see that in just a minute. I was just getting ready uh, to go and start making my jig for the chuck uh, when I realized I almost forgot a very important step, uh, which is that I need to drill a hole. The head's going to be here. So I need to drill a hole now because my eye lag, if you look very carefully, it's not centered with the hat. It's actually centered with the body of the snowman and so I need that eye lag to be lined up and it's gonna be really hard to drill that hole afterwards so I need to drill it now at least deep enough that I can see where I need to drill continue drilling the hole later on so I need to drill that hole now right down the, the center axis and so it's a little bit crude but what I've done is I just used the inside of my jaws here to grab it temporarily because this is not going to be a whole lot of a torque on this to begin with and I've used my tail stock just to center it. And now what I'll do is I'll just pull this back. I have my drill uh, right in, uh, just grabbing it with uh, some vice grips. And I'll turn this slowly and very carefully because this is kind of a delicate um, drill bit. And I'll just plunge that in and keep pulling it out. And I want to go all the way as deep as I can go with this to make sure I'm into what will become the top of the hat. All right, now I can make my jig. What I'm gonna use for my jig is I have a good quality piece of uh, Baltic birch. You can usually find this at home centers and other places. Uh, sometimes you can even get it in small sheets, that way you don't have to buy a whole sheet. Full sheets of this can be kind of expensive. And I've drilled my appropriate size hole for my screw chuck, and that's how I'm gonna get started with this. The first thing I need to do is to round this off. 
And because even though this is plywood and I have grain going up, you know, uh, perpendicular as I go through different layers, it's still just like face work. I have end grain here and I have face grain there. And so I will use what I usually use in face work. I use a gouge to chew things up. And that familiar cross end grain cut. And now this is, this jig is actually in backwards from the way it's gonna go in the chuck. Uh, so now what I need to do is I need to make, start making tenons. I'm actually gonna make two tenons. Uh, I'm gonna grab one for one axis. And so in that case, I need to have the jaws almost closed. And the second uh, tenon is actually gonna be with the jaws uh, wide open, or very close to wide open because I need the room to grab the second tenon. So I'm gonna start with the first tenon, which is gonna be for our snowman body. And I've got that already set up. I set that up ahead of time on my caliper. So I'll just touch one end until the opposite end lines up. And that is what my first tenon is going to be. And if I did everything right, this should fit in here very nicely. Ooh, I cut a little bit close, but I still have enough room left over. All right, now I have a three quarter inch drill bit chucked up in my tailstock because I need to make a three quarter inch hole right through this jig. And you may have, as you may have guessed, that's to accommodate the three quarter inch tenon that we put on the blank. All right, now I need to put, uh-oh, something went wrong. So as usual, as soon as the cameras get rolling, things will start to go wrong. Uh, something funny about that drill bit, uh, the first jig that I went to make uh, is a little bit too loose. So I checked out the tenon, the tenon is exactly three quarters of an inch. I measured the drill bit, the bill bit, drill bit was a three quarters of an inch, yet it still made uh, a, a hole that was too large. So I had to make a new, jig start over again um, and I use a different drill bit this time I used a Forstner bit that seems to be a little bit better and this time I got a nice snug fit so I need to press this in press my uh, my blank into my jig now and I'm going to press it in with the tailstock but a trick I learned from Jean-Francois Escalon when he puts uh, all his chucks uh, the Escalon multi axis chuck they're all press fit and what he does is he moistens the fibers uh, then the fibers will expand uh, after you get it into the chuck and that will give you a little bit extra hold. So I'm just going to put that up against the hole, bring my tail stack in, line it up on that center again. And if you hear that little creaking sound, that's a good sign. That means you're getting a nice tight fit. And if it starts stops making progress, you can always pull back the tail stock and use a mallet. And if you don't have a mallet, you can always use the one that came with your lathe. And since that shoulder was made between centers, when it registers against the jig, it should still be nicely lined up. It is. So now what I need, I need to get the second tenon uh, on my jig. Uh, so what I've taken out of the chuck and I'm gonna mount it between centers again, but this time I'm going to use the offset endpoints uh, instead of the centered ones. And now you can see I'm using the secondary axis at offset uh, perpendicular uh, intersecting uh, with the first one. One thing to notice on the blank is that I have a shadow on this side and I have a shadow on this side, but there's a section right in the middle with no shadow. And that is actually the point at which my original axis that I used to chew this blank up and that I'll use to do the bottom of the snowman 
intersects with the axis that we're going to use to do the hat. So I want to mark that. And that essentially is going to be right where the middle of the bead for my head needs to be. So you want to check that before you go and make your, la your second tenon. Uh, if for some reason it's too much in one direction or the other, maybe you want a small hat and a large finial, or, or vice versa, maybe you want a tall hat and a shorter finial. Um, you can play with the finial end. You can move, as long as you stay on that original parallel line on either side, you can play with uh, the axis until you get that, in that point, that intersection where there's no shadow, right in the center of the head the way you want it. But I think this is going to be fine. I'm going to end up with a slightly shorter finial, but I've got a little extra room for my hat this time. Now when I go to make them this time, when I go to make the second tenon, uh, I don't want to have the jaws almost closed like I did in the first tenon because then I'm going to have two tenons cutting into each other. This time I have to make the largest possible tenon uh, that my chuck jaws can, can uh, handle. And so I've set my a second pair of calipers uh, to that size. Uh, but since this face is not true, I can't just start sticking these calipers in there. So I have to take, I have to go a little bit at a time. And I also want to be careful uh, not to cut into my uh, other tenon. If you cut in a little bit, you'll still be okay. Uh, but you don't want to go too far because then you're going to not you're going to ruin your first tenon. So it looks like I can go another sixteenth of an inch. And that should do it. There's my second tenon for making the hat. And hopefully, if I did everything right, I'm just going to check my second tenon before I proceed in case I need to make adjustments. And it barely fits, but it's good enough. There we go. There's my second. So I'm going to go back to the first one because that's where I'm going to turn the body of the snowman. And I bring the tail stuck in just a little longer because I, I just want to turn uh, the body part of the snowman down uh, to three quarters of an inch because my my widest point on my snowman uh, which is the belly right there is three quarters of an inch uh, but I need all that, I needed all that extra material because I'm gonna need that to get to have enough material to do the hat so once again this line that we drew that I drew where this where the um, where the uh, two axes are intersecting I want to try to find about the middle of it right there and should be the two lines should intersect more or less opposite sides of the work and so that once again is the center of the head and so when I do the bottom of the snowman I, I want to start uh, do the bottom half of the head all the way down and then when I get to the other axis I'll do the top half of the head fair it out nicely and then do the hat uh, so when I go to turn this down to three quarters of an inch, I got to make sure I start right here and I leave this thick. And I don't want to touch anything to the left of that. And the rest of it, I want to turn down to three quarters of an inch. The steel will get rid of this section quickly. Alright, so now I need to turn my beads for the snowman. So I'm going to go ahead and use my old snowman to just sort of visualize uh, and mark these out. So I have this edge right in the center of my head and I'll mark there's the neck there's the other side of the belly and there's the bottom and the rest of this I'm just going to free form it anyways and so now I just have to cut those beads
The only part that's a little tricky is that I have to get the tool in here and cut half a bead right against that shoulder. I can't take away any of that material yet. So it can get a little bit tricky. Uh, maybe the tool for the job would be something like a detail gouge or whatever you can get in there. Maybe I stick to my quarter inch gouge. The nice thing about these beads, a lot of times you're trying to get exact identical beads. These are all different sizes because different parts of the snowman's body. So you don't have to fuss too much over your beads being too perfect. Now since this is poplar and I'm going to paint this, I'm not going to fuss too much with sanding. I'm just going to use uh, some 220 and call it done. So now I'm going to switch uh, to my other tenon so I can turn the top half of the ornament. Now when it spins up, you can see the head there's a tiny bit of a shadow, not too bad. You want to have as little shadow as possible right on the head. The rest of it doesn't matter. We're not even going to be touching that. And so now what I need to do, the first thing, <clears throat> is I basically need to get rid of all this shadow right here. And I think I'm going to opt for a slightly larger skew. You could use a gouge, whatever you're comfortable with. So this is the, this shoulder here, it's going to be the underside of my rim of my hat, right there. So I want to be careful not to take away too much material right there, because I need to finish the head. It's a little bit easier going this direction, because I don't have material in the way of getting the tool where I want to. But I have to make sure... And you don't have to do a finish, you don't have to do a full bead on this side. Uh, because the bead will be somewhat, the head is going to be somewhat sunk into the hat. So as long as it looks pretty good, I think that will work. Now it's not perfect, you can see there's a little bit of a shadow on that side, but it's not going to matter. I just, need to be, I just need to have it make a good transition. Uh, in the final product you're not going to really notice too much. My favorite part, I love to do the hat. It always seems to be a lot of fun. I'm going to start the top of the hat. But I don't want to go too far just yet because I'm actually going to take the whole ornament off, leave it right in the jig to paint the bottom of it. Now to finish this ornament, I'm actually going to do two, two steps. I'm going to first off the lathe, uh, I'm going to spray it with some white pigmented shellac. This is uh, sold as primer, but what it actually is is shellac with white pigmentation in it. And um, I find it, it, it gives a nice texture, a nice color uh, of white. Uh, the other thing is, a lot of times when you use a product like this, you get a lot of overspray, which basically means you've got uh, little particles that dry in the air, and then when you spray again, those get adhered to the surface as well. And normally that's not desirable. But I find with a Christmas ornament, it just gives it the texture of snow. Uh, so, uh, and you can see how convenient this, this tenon jig is becoming because uh, I'm able to take it right off the lathe, finish it, and then as you'll see, I'm gonna put it back on the lathe to do the second step of finishing. All 
All right, so I have the work, I have the snowman mounted back in the chuck on the second axis, that is the axis for the hat. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna color in the hat uh, with Sharpie markers, and I'm gonna do that right on the lathe. The first one I'm gonna do, is I don't wanna get anything on the head, so I'm only gonna try to mask this as best I can. Uh, if you do, since uh, shellac, in general, and white shellac sands really well and scrapes really well. If you do get some color on one part of the snowman that you didn't want to, you can be carefully sand it away, or you can use an exacto knife or a razor blade and very carefully scrape it away. And so, what I'm going to do now, I want the lathe moving as slow as I can get it to go, um, because sharpie markers don't like getting hot. They don't like heat. They'll get ruined really quickly. And from here, it's just a matter of touching the markers to the work. I'm using a really thin one to get right in that corner first. And I'll switch to a standard one to get the rest of this brim. Now if you find that the marker is not taking uh, very well and you haven't let it dry very long, uh, even though it's dry on the surface, there may be issues with it uh, still being a little bit wet underneath and there will still be alcohol drying out the surface, coming out of the surface, and that will keep uh, the marker from taking very well. And if that happens, you want to stop right away. Uh, otherwise, you may end up having to sand everything down and start over again. Now, Norm, so far, I've only done completely black hats, but I'm going to try something new here. I'm going to try making a little red ribbon right here. And I'm figuring I want to do the dark, the light color first. So I'll put the red ribbon right here. And follow up with some black. And now I can part the snowman off. I'm not going to worry too much about not having shellac on the top of the hat um, because I'm gonna color that in with Sharpie marker anyways. In fact, I've been thinking about not putting white shellac on the hat at all, since so it's all gonna be colored. Uh, that might speed things up, because if that shellac's not really dry, uh, it's, it doesn't work. The Sharpie marker doesn't take to it so well. But Sharpie marker, Sharpie marker always takes really well to bare wood. I'll just clean at the top right with my screw chisel. Do a little bit quick sanding by hand. And once you finish sanding the top, you should be able to find right there, you can see it's a little bit light. That's our drill hole. Um, so that'll be where we can put our eye lag. And just using the original drill, I'm gonna see if that hole is deep enough. And if not, I'm just gonna drill it in by hand. As long as the entry hole is in the right place, uh, it doesn't really matter if the drill's going in straight or not. It'll still look good. And that's deep enough for my eye lag. And I'll take my big Sharpie marker. I'm just going to color the top by hand. And I'll add my eye lag. All right, the last step is I need to put a face on my snowman. Now, the first time I did uh, snowman with a jig, uh, I tried to get the hat to go straight back. Um, but I wasn't paying attention and it actually ended up a little bit crooked, so it's going back and to the right a little bit, or to the snowman's left. Um, and I realized that's okay, and actually that's kind of fun because now I can choose, depending on where I put the face uh, on my snowman, that's going to determine which way my hat is tilted. So if I put my face here, my hat's going to be tilted straight back, uh, or I could turn it uh, so my hat is actually sideways or somewhere in between. I think I'm going to go a little bit to the back and to the left on this one. So I'm just going to make it, I'm just going to rotate it until I think it looks good. Maybe right about there. And I'm going to make my face.
Now I'm not very creative with my decoration, I just tend to put buttons and faces on there. But if you're artistic, uh, the sky's the limit. You All right, there it is, my multi-axis snowman. I found this a lot of fun to do. I'm probably gonna be making a lot more of these. Uh, now, it may have seemed like there was a lot of steps to do this. Um, I had to mark the blank, uh, the multiple axes on the, on the blank, uh, and then create the jig. Uh, but the second time around, a lot of that you don't have to do. You don't have to mark the blank. You just have to round the cylinder out, put the three quarter inch tenon in there, and stick it into the, the same jig. Um, and then, the only extra thing from there is you have to remount it on the hat axis uh, just to mark the intersection of the axis. Now this is only the second snowman I've made with the jig. Uh, and so this is still a fairly new process for me. And I'm starting to have a lot of ideas already. Uh, for instance, even though you can reuse the one jig, uh, you could make multiple jigs. That way, while one snowman's drying, you can start working on another one. Um, as well, if you're going to make multiple jigs, uh, you may make uh, jig jigs slightly differently so that perhaps you have a, a long hat version and a short hat version of the same snowman. Um, also, I thought of a couple of procedural things that might improve the process. Uh, for instance, if I transfer a perpendicular line uh, from my axis over to the side and then transfer that to my jig, It'll help with aligning the, uh, the work so that I can find the intersection of the axes much more easily. The other thing I have to figure out is I've been, although I really like the shellac, the white uh, pigmented shellac, and it works okay when you're just putting little designs on it with the Sharpie markers. Uh, if I leave the Sharpie markers on too long, it seems to start to mix and remelt uh, the shellac, perhaps because there's some alcohol in the sharpie markers that's causing the shellac to come back uh, to come back off so one solution would be just to not shellac the hat at all um, and the other would be to try to find some other kind of white uh, pigmented uh, thing that I could use perhaps a lacquer base a pigmented lacquer might work better uh, that way it won't interact with the sharpie markers so that's what I have for the final presence challenge of 2015 and so if I don't see you before the end of the year, happy holidays to you and yours, and thanks for watching.